Hey everybody, John with Owl. You see a couple of vans behind me of differing lengths because today we're gonna to be talking about lengths of vans. Does size matter? That is the age old question. And today we will find out. So this van right here, you've seen a bunch. That is the Owl Ultimate Rebel. This van right here happens to just be a customer that's in today. And we're gonna use their 170 to talk a little bit about 170 versus 144. What is the main difference? Well, as you guessed, it's length. One van is longer than the other. Mercedes makes a Sprinter chassis in three lengths. They make a 144, they make a 170, and they make a 170 extended. What are the main differences? The difference is as we walk here, this 144, the main difference in these lengths is actually between the wheels. So the actual wheelbase on this van is going to be longer. And then you're also going to get a little bit of additional space behind the rear wheel. You also have that here. Now there's a couple things we wanna keep in mind when we're talking about the length of van and why you should get one or another. These are also uh, single rear wheel vehicles. We also have Dooley's 3500s, many 170s come in 3500s. We can talk about that in a minute. But first, let's talk about where you take the van, off-roading. If you are going to be off-roading, a 144 is going to perform better. Why is that? Well, you've got a couple of things that you are gonna have to worry about. One is break over angle. So having a narrower wheelbase, as I step back a little bit, a smaller portion between the wheels means that as you crest something, that area or that point at which your belly of the vehicle hits, it's called your break over angle. Um, and when you get a longer wheelbase here, you are going to uh, basically hit sooner, which means that you're not going to be able to go over as steep of a rise in a longer wheelbase vehicle. The other thing you wanna worry about when it comes to off-roading is departure angle. And imagine here we're going up a hill. That's the point, this line here, that you would start to drag your butt. So on this van, because you've got more stick out, behind the rear wheel, you're gonna drag your butt sooner. Here's where the 170 extended really starts to make a difference. And I would actually, unless you're, you know, a limo company and you wanna carry 27 people to the airport, the 170 extended has the same wheelbase as a 170, but they add an additional amount of room behind the rear wheel. This really turns this into a vehicle you don't wanna take off road. So. If you are getting a 170 extended, you are basically saying, I'm going to keep this van on the pavement. Now, if you're going for a 144 or a 170, you can absolutely take both off the beaten path and you'll be fine. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight that there are some differences between a 144 and a 170 when it comes to off-roading. Now, the big difference and the big reason someone would go to a 170 is space. You're gonna get more space inside. You see these kind of flares on this van. Now this is a Revel, so these are Winnebago flares. A lot of people uh, use flare space, you know, uh, uh, storytellers use flare space. And this is so that you can rotate the bed sideways. So people sleep across transversely in the van. In most 170s, you won't see flares as often because the bed can be uh, laid in this van this way and uh, it doesn't take up the entirety of the living space. So you'll see a lot of beds in 170s without flares. So uh, you're gonna save a little bit of money by not installing flares, but you're not necessarily maximizing the interior volume of a 170 if you don't put flares. Just a little side note. The main thing about a 170 is it does feel more spacious. So I would recommend a 170 if you have more than two and a half people. Hold on, we got a jet going by. That was a close one. Yeah. Two and a half people. What do I mean by two and a half people? So uh, 144s tend to get pretty tight. Now I am usually traveling in this van with me or me and two kids. So I would call that kind of a little over two people because my kids are smaller. If you have a uh, family with two adults and a child, I think you're gonna be okay in a 144. If you have more than that, let's say uh, two adults, two kids where the kids might be, you know, 12 and eight or 14 and 10, you're gonna want a 170. It just gets too tight in a 144. So I would opt, if you are more than two and a half people for a 170, uh, or more than two and a half people, you're gonna opt for a 170. All right, now we're gonna talk about dual versus single rear wheels. Why, 
would someone want a dually or not want a dually? You will not find many 170s. So again, this one is a single rear wheel and you can tell uh, there's one rear wheel and single rear wheels are important because they perform much better off-road than duallys. A lot of 3500s because of the weight, the manufacturer will force you to go to a dual rear wheel. And what that's gonna do is that extra wheel is gonna uh, eat up some of your interior space on the inside. And it's also gonna cause problems off-road. And I'll show you on our box truck what I mean. To explain a 3500 versus a 2500. A lot of you already know that means dual versus single rear wheels as I get in here. Here's a dually setup. Now again, this is our box truck, not a sprinter, but the concept is the same. This exists, it's kind of what we call a relic. I don't even know why dualies still exist. The, they, you know, they make a ton of sense on box trucks because we can put you know 20,000 pounds in this thing. Originally, tire technology was kind of garbage and these tires would blow out and they couldn't handle the load rating. So you put dual tires in the back, solve the load rating issue. Now, tires have gotten so good that you really don't have tire blowouts like you used to with load. And with a van that's 10,000 pounds, you absolutely can get by with a single rear wheel. So I would kind of recommend against the dually. If you already have one, it is what it is. No, no, no reason to like sell your van or anything. But if you're buying it brand new, I would recommend against the dually. And here's why. It makes it harder to air up and air down. Notice you've got another tire in there that you've got to get to the air valve, right? So when you're going off road, you got to air up and air down. So going to a dually just makes that harder and you've got two extra tires to air up and air down. Here's the real problem with the dually. See these little pebbles that are stuck in here? That's stuck in there because you've got a little valley. Well, what's this channel right here? It's a big valley. So you go off road, rocks get wedged in here and rocks are sharp. You see how this is digging in to that tread? It's kind of made its own little home there. If that tread held air, eventually that would rub through and cause a flat. So. Dooleys, and someone can correct me in the comments. If I've got dooleys wrong, correct me. But I believe dooleys are kind of antiquated, and the Owl Box truck carries a ton more weight than a van does. But if you're going for a 3500, uh, it's unnecessary. Again, if it's the only van you can get, then it is what it is. But as far as vans go, if you're choosing between a 170 and a 144, right there, it really comes down to people. Uh, you have more room in a 170, so you can fit more people. Other drawbacks to a 170 though, uh, parking. It's gonna be harder to park. If you got an HOA and you're a little concerned about people complaining, a 170 looks more like, I don't wanna say an RV, but it's more substantial. It looks big. 144s don't look as big, and so you can get away with a lot more. You can park them on a city street. You can, um, you know, kind of do some urban camping and not get as uh, as hassled, if you will, than a 170. So hopefully you will find this video informative. If I forgot anything, I may do a supplemental pieces to this video, but that is my general take on getting a 170 versus a 144 Sprinter. <laughs>